Right, welcome to this video on bonding for biologists and monomers and polymers. So as a biologist, you do need to be familiar with some basic chemistry. So let's start with atomic structure. So you should recall that a, an atom is made up of a nucleus, which is composed of positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. And then there should be uh, around the outside in these shells, uh, electrons spinning around the outside. So the number of electrons is normally equal to the number of protons. So there's four um, elements that you need to be familiar with. So the first is hydrogen. So hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus and then one electron uh, in its outer shell. Carbon has six protons in the nucleus and then six electrons. But the way the electrons are arranged, are uh, there's two electrons on the inner shell and then four electrons on the outer shell. Nitrogen has seven protons and seven electrons and oxygen eight protons and eight electrons. So the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an element determine the number of bonds it can form. So hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell, which means there's one space, so it can form one bond. Carbon has four spaces, so it can form four bonds. Nitrogen, three spaces, so three bonds, and oxygen, two spaces, so two bonds. Now, if you can remember these basic facts about these elements, it's going to help you um, remember how to draw your biological molecules that you need to be able to draw for the course. Right, let's get into some bonding then. So the first type of bond is known as an ionic bond. Now, ionic bonds form between ions, one negatively charged ion and one positively charged ion. So an ion is an atom that has gained or lost an electron. Now, if we have a look here, we've got a sodium atom and you can see that it has one electron in its outermost shell. Here we have a chlorine atom and it's got one space in its outermost shell. Now, the chlorine atom needs to fill this space and the sodium atom is quite happy to lose this electron so that its next most inner shell is filled. So this is basically what happens. The sodium atom donates this electron to the chlorine atom. Now, as a result, you can see here where the sodium atom has lost the electron. This is now known as a sodium ion. And because it's lost an electron, that means that the, the ratio of protons to electrons has now changed. There's more protons in the nucleus than there are electrons uh, spinning around the outside. So this sodium atom now becomes positively charged. And we say that it is plus one in its charge. The chlorine atom, in the other hand, has now gained this electron. So again, the ratios of protons to electrons has changed. There's now more electrons um, in this atom than there are protons and so we say that this is a negatively charged ion and we would um, say that it is minus one in charge. Now wherever you have a positively charged um, ion near a negatively charged ion one is going to attract the other. Positive attracts negative, negative attracts positive. So effectively these two stick together as a result of these charges and where that happens we say that an ionic bond has formed. The next type of bond um, occurs between two atoms that are missing just a few electrons, one, two, three electrons in their outermost shell. Now, rather than giving and receiving electrons, a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons. So if we have a look here, we've got two oxygen atoms, both of them missing two electrons in the outermost shell. Now, if this oxygen atom shares two of its electrons with this oxygen atom, that effectively means you fill the outer shell in both um, atoms. So you can see here in this atom here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons and the same is true for this atom here. So they have filled their outer shells. Now this uh, sharing of electrons means that these two become intrinsically linked or bonded together and that's a covalent bond. The final type of bond is a hydrogen bond. Now, hydrogen bonding happens between molecules uh, that are covalently bonded together. So here you can see we have a water molecule. Now, water molecules made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now, a covalent bond has formed between this hydrogen atom and this oxygen atom and the same here. So you can see the oxygen atom has a full outer shell, eight electrons, and each hydrogen atom has a full outer shell, two electrons. 
Now, because the oxygen atom has more protons in its nucleus than either hydrogen atom, this means that this oxygen atom is more able to attract the electrons towards itself than the hydrogen atoms are. You can see here that these electrons are found on the oxygen side of the hydrogen atom rather than on the other side. Now, what this means is that this molecule now has two partial charges to it. On the oxygen side, we have a partially negative charge because the electrons are more likely to be found there, while on the hydrogen side of the molecule, we have a partially positive charge. Now, these charge differences, partially negative and partially positive, are nowhere near the same strength as what we have in an ionic bond where we've actually lost and gained electrons. These are just partial charges, so they're weak negative and weak positive charges. But they are significant enough that if two molecules um, experiencing the same partial charge come near each other, you can see that we have an attraction between the two molecules. So here, this water molecule on the hydrogen side that's partially positive in charge is attracted to this water molecule where on the oxygen side where it's partially negatively charged. And if we have lots of these molecules together, then you're going to form lots and lots of hydrogen bonds. Equally, if you have one of these molecules that has partially positive, partially negatively charged regions, then they will also be attracted to uh, ions as well, so positive and negatively charged um, ions. Any molecule that has this partial charge, so negative on one side and positive on the other, we call that molecule a polar molecule because it has two poles, one negative pole and one positive pole. Right, let's get into monomers and polymers then. So I said at the start that you need to be familiar with four elements, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. That is because those are the four elements that make up the vast bulk of the biomass of an organism. That's the mass that makes up an organism. And those four elements are found within four main biological molecules, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids and proteins. Now, those final three, carbohydrates, nucleic acids and proteins, are all made up of repeating units known as monomers that are bonded together to form polymers. So in a carbohydrate, the monomers are known as monosaccharides. In a nucleic acid, they're known as nucleotides. And in a protein, they are known as amino acids. Where these monomers are bonded together, in a carbohydrate, the polymers would be starch, cellulose and glycogen. In a nucleic acid, they would be DNA and RNA. And in a protein, they would be a polypeptide that forms a protein. Now, in order for a monomer to form or a group of monomers to form a polymer, we need a reaction known as a condensation reaction. So where one monomer reacts with another, the condensation reaction causes water to be formed. Think condensation where water forms on a cold um, a pane of glass. So um, during this reaction, one reacts with the other, water molecule is released and in return, a covalent bond is formed. On the other hand, if a polymer is to be broken down into monomers, then we have what's known as a hydrolysis reaction. Break the word down. Hydro means water. Lysis means break. We use water to break the covalent bond. And so part of the water molecule binds to one monomer. The other part binds to the other monomer. The water molecule is effectively lost and the monomers are released. OK, here's the key terms for this topic. Pause the video now if you would like to write those down. Remember that there's loads of free resources on my website, pxsbiology.com. And if you like this video or found it useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and share.